Hello, welcome to uh, another uh, Shellixle tutorial. This time we will solve a, stu a structure using Shellix S and using the Patterson command or a Patterson uh, uh, map to solve the structure. We just add here this pad as uh, after unit instruction and before HKLF. Uh, instruction and we just click here on Shellix S and here we are. There's the solution. The solution in this case is um, just two atoms one is bismuth and another one is silicon. So let's see what else we could figure out. We just refine this structure and we see here uh, popping up some cube peaks and um, two of them are quite of higher density, so we assume those two atoms are nitrogen atoms. So we just click them and make them nitrogen atoms. And you see here there are also three cu peaks next to the silicon atom, so probably those are methyl groups, so we have uh, metal groups on the silicon. Um, so we just click save. Um, save always uh, helps you to get uh, cube peaks closer to your atoms which are already there. So let's just um, um yeah, make some more QPX carbon atoms by just clicking them. So we can change the order of these atoms later. So let's again click on that. So, uh huh. So story goes on over here so uh, and there is the carbon missing like this so this looks almost like a structure I would say so uh, let's exit rename mode um, click on save so we have now this kind of structure so let's see what the refinement does. Yeah, it seems to be rather stable. So let's see if we have here some more things to see. Um, probably. So maybe here are some more carbon atoms. Ah, a benzene molecule. So let's see. Mm -hmm. And we already see this is just not just one benzene molecule, it seems to be rather disordered, so um, we just try to fix that with DSR. So let's see benzene. Yeah, here we are. And we put that into a part and we use free variable 2 and we want to replace this and um, we don't mind having um, a residue name for that. So let's uh, use it. So, but first we need to select three atoms here. And we see the fit is okay. So 
let's fit that like this so here the benzene comes with a lot of uh, restraints and uh, starting three variables of, of 0.5 so let's refine that and see how it becomes a complete uh, thing it's just a bit too high in for my um, taste and so I just take some of these three Q peaks and let's add um, another benzene molecule over it and we use uh, part two uh, we use also the free variable two but uh, in a negative sense which means it's one minus the free variable um, number two and this makes the sum usually being um, tied to one so um, we have in sum just one benzene molecule but uh, disordered on two sides um, that should uh, work quite well like this so let's see and try to refine that again Oh, it has redone this uh, free variable. That's cool. Um, so let's see. Uh -huh. So let's see. Yeah. So we see one thing that there are two atoms very close. So I usually make those then having the same ADP um, it's probably a good choice to keep them uh, away from being non-positive definite or looking weird if they are two atoms at uh, the same position usually the uh, these squares cannot distinguish their thermal parameter apart so um, probably that should um, give a slightly a better result so um, we find that if that works seems to be the case so then we be brave and we find that anisotropically doesn't complain about any non-positive or split position ADPs so seems to be nice um, as we have a very heavy bismuth atom the peaks for uh, hydrogen atoms are not very pronounced but that's uh, normal so we just try to fix uh, some hydrogens to that structure like this so this is just the azimuth unit now um, let's refine that uh -huh and here we go that's our structure let's see what is our r value yet so it's two percent um yeah let's see if we have extinction uh, normally extinction and um, this order doesn't like each other so probably we don't have any so let's see if there is some kind of a value no we don't so have learned the right thing so um, what else yeah we can try to refine the weighting scheme and see if that converges yes it does and now uh, it didn't improve the R value that much but we have um, here um, and we see the free variable is almost three quarters so one side is one quarter and the other side is three quarters occupied um, you can see that as well here so this is the other one which is 23.8 uh, 
8% occupied and this one is 76.2% uh, um, occupied um, yeah so this is uh, such a structure with this order um, and um, so of course we can have a uh, look at the F observed map as well doesn't seem to be very interesting um, features so we see here this uh, bismuth has some features around it and um, so we could use that feature uh, of uh, making a contour plot so we just um, use the second atom as a center, we use FO map and probably we use um, two here, make uniform contours, mm, probably three angstroms around is okay and we use the feature of having a height map and well, we extend that over more than one cell, I don't know. Um, we don't need the encapsulated postscript file just for that we just wait now some seconds and now let's see yeah so this is the truth about uh, the density so this bismuth peak is incredible much higher than any other peak in the structure so those are the nitrogen peaks, they're really small against that very, very huge uh, thing. And of course, around such a thing, there is some Fourier noise because we don't measure infinite uh, number of reflections. So um, we usually don't have to care that much about uh, that such features over there. So that was it uh, for this uh, tutorial. Thanks for listening and uh, goodbye.